All right, in this video, we're gonna learn about the MAO formula, and we're gonna talk about what it is and why it's used. So the MAO formula stands for the maximum allowable offer, and this essentially is the most that we're willing to pay for a property as an investor. So I'm a landlord, I'm a, I'm a rehabber, fix and flipper. Um, I also do a lot of wholesaling, and I live and die based on the MAO formula. Most investors, are gonna use a formula just like this. So if you are an investor, you need to learn this formula. Again, it's called the Maximum Allowable Formula, Allowable Offer Formula, and it stands for M-A-O, all right? So let's see here, next slide. Why does anybody care? Great question. Well, the M-A-O formula will help remove the emotion from the deal. And when you have emotions that are brought into a deal, that's typically how you lose money. Uh, I've done over 500 deals, lost money on two, and I overpaid for both because I was a little emotional about it. So stick to the maximal allowable offer and you're guaranteed to break even at minimum if you follow this rule. So the MAO formula is simply there to remove the emotion and allow you to work on the numbers and make a decision based on the numbers, right? I don't want you to be a speculator. I want you to be an investor and this is how you do it, all right? So MAO formula, what is it? What does it look like? Here it is. The MAO formula stands or equals ARV times my discount rate minus my repairs, all right? That's my maximum allowable offer formula. Now we may add to that and I'll show you why in a minute. So let's break it down and explain exactly how we use it and how we can actually apply this to real world investing. So the MAO formula, again, it equals ARV times my discount rate minus my repairs. And the ARV is gonna equal my after repair value, all right? This is gonna be the value of a property um, after we fix it up. So that's actually really where we start. So when I'm out running an appointment or I'm talking to somebody or I'm you know, working through a lead, I typically wanna know the address and a little bit about the property. Um, and then what I go do is I go determine the ARV. Now it's not what that property looks like today. And that's something that people have to kind of work through in the beginning. It's actually, what is the highest and best use of that property? And how much could it be worth? Now, realistically speaking, you know, we're not trying to push our ARV above the comps in the market, of course. But if we are just assuming that it's gonna sell at the, at, the, at the high of the market, like similar to the rest of the other houses, maybe not too much more or too much less, but at those ranges, that's what we consider an ARV. So it's not what it looks like today, it's what it could be, all right? That's what we define as our ARV, or our after repair value. So again, any house you look at, you don't look at it in its current condition, you look at it what it could be. So that's something you have to change your mind on right there, it's a mindset shift. Next is the discount rate, all right? The discount rate is typically 70%, and we're gonna talk about that just in a second too, uh, but keep it simple, typically it's about 70%. Next, we have our repairs, and this is the cost to get to our ARV. So again, when we're looking at a property, it's probably not 100% done, right? It probably needs some work. Um, hopefully it does, because that allows us to get a better deal as investors. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, hey, the highest and best use, if we fix this all up, it'll probably be worth this. But depending on what, how we choose that ARV is gonna determine our cost of repairs. Because we may you know, decide to put 30,000 into a property in repairs, and that's gonna get us an after repair value of X, right? But if we put $80,000 into that same property, it's gonna give us a whole different ARV. But oftentimes there's a diminishing level of returns there. So not to get too complicated, but whatever you decided to do to get to your ARV, now you take that same number of repairs that you were having to factor in and you take that off. So just to recap, MAO equals ARV times my discount rate minus my repairs. So that's my after repair value times roughly 70% or my discount rate minus my repairs. And that's gonna give us what we call a maximum allowable offer. It's not the offer we're gonna make, it's the most that we're gonna allow ourselves to make an offer on, on this particular property, okay? If we were wholesaling, all right, without the, without the wholesale fee, with the wholesale fee. That's the only thing that changes. So if we're wholesaling, we're gonna actually reduce a little more because I'm the investor that's the landlord or the rehabber, right? And I'm, I'm trying to buy at this formula. So if I'm gonna be using the MAO formula to wholesale, I need to be buying at that formula because I need to be able to sell it to my people at this formula. So all you're doing is you're adding on an additional fee 
which brings that, that uh, offer even lower. All right. So again, if wholesaling, you have to buy great and you sell those deals at good. So you have to make that additional fee factored in to your offer. So now, why are we using a discount rate? I love this question. And the reason is, is because we have to factor in our holding costs, which could be things like our utilities, our insurance, our taxes, and you know the cost to borrow the money. I typically don't use any of my own money when I'm buying houses to fix them up and rent them out or sell them. I'm typically borrowing all that. So I have to I have a cost with that. So you have to factor in those holding costs. You also have to factor in your cost to sell a property. And typically you're gonna be paying 6% in, in fees to an agent. You're gonna have closing costs to the title company or closing attorney. And you're gonna have what's called seller concessions, which basically means after you go get this property under contract and you find a buyer, they're gonna send an inspector over and they're gonna put that house through the gamut. And I don't care if it's a new build, brand new, you're still gonna have 30 pages of little knickknack. So you can go and you can fix all that stuff or you can essentially just give them a little discount. Either way, if you go fix it, it's gonna cost you time and money. So either way, it's, it's just something that you're gonna have to come out of pocket on. So again, you have additional fees. So you have your holding costs, you have your cost to sell, and then finally, we want to add in our expected profit. So, you know, typically a, the cost to sell a home is around 9 or 10%, just roughly. It could be a little less, it could be a little more. But just keep it simple, guys. It's roughly almost 10% to sell a property, all right? I don't typically want to invest in, in, in buy a house and, and take the risk of buying it and borrowing all that money and fixing it up and selling it for a profit if I can't make at least 20%. So that's where we get a discount rate, typically, of 70%. We're taking 30% off the top. 10% is the cost to sell. 20% is the expected profit. And those two combined make 30%. So we multiply our formula by 70% typically. Now, the reason I don't just have my MAO formula equal ARV times 70% is because the discount rate is actually designed to slide up and down. So in the nicest parts of town, I'm willing to do flips at 15%. So I'll actually come in at 75% of the discount rate. Or I may even come in at 80% if I know somebody that's wanting to buy really bad in that area and I don't need to come in, you know, I don't need to discount it too much, right? I could essentially allow my cost to sell to stay rough, roughly 10%, but I can decrease my expected profit to 10%. But even at doing that, your highest you wanna take your, your discount rate ever is 80%. It's designed to slide. So there's places in St. Louis where I live and invest that I don't even like driving to, right? And sometimes I'll get a lead over there. My discount rate will be like 0.3. It will be so low because it's basically like if you aren't this motivated to sell it, I don't want to waste my time dealing with going out there and making an offer and looking at this rundown house. So you're allowed to discount that and, and bring that down as low as you want. But typically speaking, 70% is what most investors use. And the reason is, is because you have 10% built in for your cost to sell and your holding costs and all those other costs that are included, um, as well as the 20% for your profit. Now, again, that 10% usually factors in taxes, insurance, and all those different things. So that's what a discount rate is and why we use a discount rate, all right? So let's do run through a quick example deal real quick, right? So let's say we have a house and it doesn't matter where it's at. And this property has an ARV of about $160,000. And the property needs $35,000 in repairs. So we're gonna use this simple formula, guys. We're gonna remove all the emotion out of this. We're gonna use this simple formula to determine what our offer is gonna be, okay? So again, the, the 35 in repairs though, it does correlate to the ARV because if I decided to do 55,000 in repairs, that ARV would probably be higher. But again, there's a diminishing level at some point. So highest and best use. What's the least amount of money I can put into this property to get the highest ARV? Because after a certain point, I'm just gonna be putting money in and it's not gonna be raising accordingly. It's just gonna be barely going up or staying flat, right? So that's something that we're gonna have to learn on our own, in our own market, okay? But again, we are gonna sell for MAO, we're gonna solve for the maximum allowable offer, okay? So 160K times the discount rate of 0.7 minus the 35,000 puts us at an MAO of 77,000. So the maximum allowable offer, the most that we are going to allow ourselves to offer on this particular example property is 77,000. 
So I'm gonna ask you real quick, what are we gonna offer on this property? And if you say 77,000, you're not listening because this is the maximum allowable offer. It's the most that we are gonna allow ourselves to offer. Again, we're removing the emotion. So again, don't forget, this is not our offer. This is the maximum that we are gonna allow ourselves to offer on this property. Now, that may be six months from now even, right? I'm gonna use a lower offer in the meantime to hopefully get a better deal on it because if they accept the lower offer, even better. But if not, I need to have some wiggle room in there, right? So in this case, the MAO at 160 multiplied by 70% discount rate minus my 35 in repairs, that puts us in MAO at about 70, or at 77,000. That's exactly what the MAO is in this example, the maximum allowable offer. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna offer 65 to 70,000. And guess what? If they accept that offer, even better, you just got a better deal. And if you know anything about real estate investing, you make your money when you buy, you get paid when you sell. So if you can even get it lower, you're making more money on the purchase. But again, our offer is gonna be 65 to 70,000. And we're gonna have, uh, that looks like what, 12 to seven to $12,000 worth of wiggle room, depending on what our original offer is, to eventually get up to 77. But we never wanna lead with that because nobody wants to work with somebody that isn't willing to negotiate a little. I'm sure you've heard people in the past say, oh, my best offer is my first offer. You want me to make another one? It's, it's gonna be a little lower, right? Nobody wants to work with that person. So having a little bit of wiggle room and a little bit of negotiating over time will help you get more deals. But again, the purpose is to reduce the risk completely from making your offers. And that is why we use what is called the maximum allowable offer formula, the MAO formula here. And again, we want to add in wiggle room so we're able to negotiate with those sellers. So guys, if you've learned anything today at all, use a maximum allowable offer formula to calculate your offers. It's going to help you uh, reduce your risk of losing on deals. And it's also going to help you get a nice sound offer that's based on numbers because I don't want anybody to be to leave this video and go in and make an offer and speculating. Speculating is what gets, gets us in trouble. So let's make a calculated decision when we're making our offers and let's use what we like to call the maximum allowable offer formula. And that's it guys, hopefully you learned something. Thanks for watching, we'll see you on the next one.